field goal with Mike Johnson with one second on the clock to win the game against UTEP. But that field goal wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for a gutsy fourth down run by Pat Evans, and that wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the block. All right, let's set the scene. UTEP up 21-20. There's less than two minutes to go. The Falcons come up with a 53-yard drive on 12 plays to set up that kick. And the key play on the UTEP 47, they're not in range yet. It's fourth and six, and Fisher calls a run? Coach DeBerry does that a lot, though. I mean, he, he calls plays that you wouldn't think would work, and I guess that's why they work, because no one expected them. And I, when I went up to the line of scrimmage and saw the defense they ran, I was just thinking, yeah, <laughs> it's going to work. And it does work, thanks to that gentleman's block. Left guard Steve Hendrickson, number 75, blasts off the line and murders a linebacker. I was really happy to see that uh, UTEP went into their prevent defense, a 50, and it made it a lot easier on us. And all I really had to do was block the linebacker straight on. And I've said this before, the real tough block on that was actually done by uh, Blake Eddies and Roy Garcia because they were responsible for the nose and backside linebacker. And I think you know the rest. Pat Evans picks up 15 big ones and Air Force wins, and that's nothing new for Hendrickson. He opened a couple of major holes for Pat in last year's Blue Bunnet Bowl win over Texas. And he seemingly does it all, pass blocking or run blocking. In my opinion, he's the best lineman in the WAC. And he's certainly the leader on that Falcon front. Last year, his name was kind of hidden next to Sutton, Evenson, and Wilson. But this year, along with Evans, he's the only returning starter in offense. And he's definitely lived up to that leadership role. And that may be a surprise. He's a 6'2", 230-pound senior from Louisville, Ohio. He wanted to play Division I football, but wasn't heavily recruited. Not even by Air Force. In fact, it's sort of the other way around. He recruited them. It's kind of funny because I never even saw an Air Force coach before I came here. I was I was only like 205 when I graduated from high school. And uh, well, they just talked to me on the phone and talked to my dad. We sent some film out. So I came out here sight unseen pretty much. Kind of worked my way up from the bottom, I guess. I figured it out. This is the 14th year I've played on a team, organized football. And that's 14 out of 22 years. I don't know what I'm going to do when this is all over. <laughs> you know. I'm sure he'll think of something, but there's one more thing I want to bring up. The guys on the team don't call him Steve. In fact, he's known as Mach. How did the nickname Mach come about? I don't want to ask him. Sure, I want to ask him. <laughs> and if the answer is good, we might use it, you know? All right. Uh, it was back in ninth grade. I was like the first guy to start lifting weights in my class. So I was bigger than everyone. And remember that terrible song by the village people? Macho, Macho Man. Man. Yeah, that came out. So they tacked it on me. Hey, hey. Fortunately, over the years, it's been shortened, so people don't know what, what it means. Now we do. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas. Macho, macho man, yeah. I've got to be a macho man. Macho, macho man. And, of course, Steve <laughs> was opening a lot of holes for you on Friday night. Hey, boy, am I glad he came to the academy. And what a competitor he is, and he's exactly right. We didn't know a lot about him. He started down at the bottom. He's worked his way up. But boy, what a proven performer and what a great role model he is. And he's very, very, very popular with all of our players. All right, Coach, we'll come back and take a look at the other WAC scores and take a look at Navy right after this. That's a big one Saturday night. Boy, you know, and uh, to shut down a great offensive team like New Mexico tells you a lot about Hawaii's defense. All right, there's UTEP going up against a very good Tennessee team. Elsewhere, other whack scores from last night. Kind of a surprise there. Well, I was really hoping uh, Dennis and those would really get Iowa State, but uh, apparently, uh, you know, they uh, had some problems with their, with their pass game. There is the big one, though. Boy, that's a great win for Colorado State, and uh, right in BYU's own backyard, and what a great night for Steve Bartello, who he becomes the all-time leading rusher in WAC history. San Diego State is going to be a tough, tough ball game uh, a few weeks down the road. Well, you know, Stanford's undefeated, and they're really off to their best start in a number of years, and that must have really been an outstanding football game. All right, this Saturday, round one, Commander-in-Chief's already a sellout at Falcon Stadium. You'll play Navy. Oh, boy, and what a big game. And, you know, uh, there's nothing any bigger in our football program than Army and Navy, I guarantee you. And that's the number one goal, John, in our football program every year is to, to, uh, to retain that Commander-in-Chief's trophy. There is Chuck Smith, a leading ground gamer, 
ground gainer in the United States right now uh, Saturday against Dartmouth. Well, it's going to be a tremendous challenge for our defense. And, you know, that's the thing that they look forward to, just like uh, we had Bartello week before last and Edgar this past week. It doesn't get any easier each week. But, you know, for the nation's number one all-purpose runner to be coming to Falcon Stadium, boy, it's going to be an exciting time. All right, we look forward to it. 12.05 kickoff. Good luck, Coach, and a great win. Friday night over in Salt Lake. Well, thank you, John, and we're just looking forward now to this one. That one's behind us, and we are just uh, committed ourselves to taking them one at a time, and, you know, if we do that, then some good things can happen to this football team, hopefully on down the road. All right, we're going to have the game, the Navy game, for you live right here on Channel 13, and, of course, we'll have all the highlights again next Monday night, 6.30. For the coach, good night, everybody. <laughs> TV 13, the leader in sports television, presents Air Force Football 1986 with head coach Fisher DeBerry. Sponsored by the First National Bank, McDonald's, USAA Insurance, and True Value Hardware. Now your host, John Eves. And good evening, everybody. Final score from a chilly and snowy Falcon Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Air Force 40, Navy 6. Coach, a great victory. I really thought you dominated in all three areas. Well, John, I thought it was a complete team win. I really did. I told our kids after the game, I thought that our, our defense just did a superb job on the nation's leading rusher, limiting him to 40 yards, you know. Our defense, uh, their pride was tarnished a little bit over in Utah, and I knew that they would come back and have a great game because they have so much defensive pride. And, uh, you know, uh, our offense took advantage of every opportunity that the defense gave them. We had the ball in super field position a number of times. And, of course, boy, Chris Blasey and Mark Simon and our cover teams, our return game, and our kicking game just dominated our uh, air, uh, Navy's kick game, you know. And I just really felt like it was a complete team effort in every sense of the word. You've beaten Navy now five years in a row. Anytime you can do that, you got to feel great. Well, I told the seniors after the game, you know, I said, boy, I'm so happy for all of you, and I'm so happy for you know and appreciate so much what you've done for this program and given to this football program but there's one thing you can leave here and say the navy never beat you all right coach we've got all